From Penn State Health, this is Ask Us Anything About Seasonal Allergies. I'm Scott Gilbert. Thanks for watching today. You see the trees, the grasses, the flowers behind us, a sure sign of spring. It's also a sign of spring and seasonal allergies for a lot of people. So here to sort out what allergy sufferers can expect this season is Dr. Faud Ishmael. He's an allergist here at Penn State Health, Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Dr. Ishmael, thanks for being here today. Yep, thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about this season and what we're seeing in terms of allergens. Uh, now, it's been a little bit of a wacky season weather-wise. How does that play into it as well? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, here in Pennsylvania, we, we typically expect our tree season, which is what uh, the springtime is, probably start as early as the first week of March, usually peaking within the you know, first couple of weeks. So in that sense, we, we've, had, uh, we've actually had a pretty decent season so far. Uh, with, with some of the cold weather, some of the, the snow we've had, uh, we haven't had a sustained increase in, in the pollens like we expect. Um, now we'll see what happens moving forward as the weather has been warming up a little bit, uh, especially as we get into April. Uh, things may change. Um, the, the, tree, the tree pollens are, are going to come out a little bit more as the weather warms up. Um, and so I think we're going to end up seeing some symptoms uh, within the next week or two. So that late March snowstorm is going to have an impact. It's just not clear exactly what type of impact yet. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there are a couple. Uh, there are a couple things to consider. Uh, one of those is uh, many people out there are not allergic only to tree pollens. They may be allergic to grasses or weeds. And as we go through April, as we get into May, uh, grass is going to come up. So uh, people may not be completely out of the woods. Um, for those who are tree allergic, uh, one of the things that remains to be seen is whether you know, we'll, we'll get a rapid increase in, in tree pollens that kind of merges into the grass season and, and maybe symptoms uh, are, are going to start developing uh, pretty quickly. So we just kind of have to see which allergens emerge at what time then. Very yeah, interesting. Exactly. You're watching Ask Us Anything About Seasonal Allergies from Penn State Health. I'm Scott Gilbert along with Dr. Faud Ishmael. We welcome your questions. Feel free to type them into the comment field below this Facebook post. Whether you're watching the video live with us here on Monday or if you're watching it on playback, we can still track down some answers to those questions and get those to you. You know, Dr. Ishmael, here in central Pennsylvania, it, it seems like we have a lot of allergens in this area. How does this area stack up compared with, say, other parts of the country? Yeah, so, so we definitely are in a, a hot spot when it comes to allergies. And uh, when we think about outdoor allergies, you know, there are a few things that we think about. Um, so in general, we have four main seasons. We have the springtime, which are primarily tree pollens. Uh, we have the, the, the summer, which is primarily grass and a few weeds. And then ragweed starts early fall, kind of going into the first frost. And actually, once leaves drop and, and get, they get a little wet, we start to get molds that come up. So we're, we're in an area that's really prevalent in all of those things. So some people may have allergies starting uh, beginning of March and actually going all the way through uh, the end of fall or, or going into winter. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're certainly in an area with, with, with all of those things. Well, I, I, I feel it as well every springtime. I'm, I'm among those who, who always know when it's springtime based on the allergy symptoms. Um, talk a bit about avoiding those triggers. It seems like that's a, a good, important first step is to try to avoid them. Things like you know, staying indoors when you can, but that's also tough because you want to get outside and enjoy the summer. Yeah, absolutely. So, so really the first step is, is avoiding allergens, reducing the exposure. That, that's, the, you know, that, that's kind of the cornerstone of where we start. Um, Outdoor allergens, there are a few things that you can do. Um, you know, one of the common things I think is, is, you know, weather starts to warm up a little bit in the spring. People have a, a desire to open up the window, get some fresh air. Uh, the problem is all those pollens come in and, and now you have a pretty high exposure, especially when you're sleeping. So that's really the first thing. Uh, avoid sleeping with your windows open. Um, some people will dry their clothes outside, especially as the weather warms up. So that's another thing to keep an eye on. Um, because the dryness. pollen's flying through the air. Absolutely, the pollens on. will deposit on, on the clothing, and, and sure. you know, when you bring it in, you, you're, now you have another source of exposure. Um, you know, there, there are a few other things that, that, may, that may help. Um, pollens tend to be highest in the mornings. So if, if you're going to go out for a, a run or, or a walk or spend some time outside, uh, doing it towards the end of the day might actually be a little bit better than the beginning of the day. And uh, when you come in from the outside, you have to be aware the pollens are going to deposit on your skin, your hair, your clothing. So it's a good time to throw your clothes in a hamper, maybe, maybe have a shower to, to get those off. Uh, outside of that, you know, th there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, you know, it's probably better to go outside and get some exercise than completely avoid it. Um, 
You know, a few important things too that, that may be helpful. Um, when you're indoors, especially as the weather gets warmer, uh, running your air conditioning might help. The, the AC filter uh, is sufficient to filter out most of the pollens we're exposed to. Uh, and, and if you have central AC, changing the filter on a regular basis is also something else that can be really key. Good advice. You're watching Ask Us Anything About Seasonal Allergies from Penn State Health. I'm Scott Gilbert along with Dr. Faud Ishmael. And we welcome you to share this interview. Uh, if you find this information useful, feel free to share it right now, live, while we're doing this interview, or even, again, if you're watching it after the fact. And, of course, feel free to ask your questions as well, and we'll track down some answers for you from Dr. Ishmael. Boy, there's... Uh, A lot for some of the more severe symptoms, things like lots of mucus produced, potes look drip, congestion. So that's really when we think about going to the next step, which would be intranasal steroids. Um, now, you know, even though these, these are steroid medications, they're actually uh, a safe kind of a steroid. These are, you know, and, and what you think about if, if you have a swollen joint, you get a cortisol shot, th those are endosons. Uh, the, the nose spray forms are even safer because it's topical, it's really going to the nose only. So those are anti-inflammatory medications, and those really will treat the vast majority of allergy symptoms, both nasal and, it turns out, eye symptoms as well. Um, one of the key things to remember with the, the intranasal steroids is they don't act right away. You need to use them every day, probably for a good week, maybe two weeks for them to really build up. So as you think about uh, your springtime allergies, you may actually want to start that a week or two before when your symptoms normally would occur. And usually we'll tell people continuum daily throughout the end of allergy season, or at least their allergy season. Um, now, you know, th there are a few medications that we in general tell people to avoid, and those are the uh, decongestants. They can either be oral decongestants, uh, topical decongestants, either in nose spray or eye drop form. Well, why is that? Because I was on a decongestant for a while, and it seemed to handle the symptoms, but that's not optimal. Yeah, exactly. So the way the decongestants work is they, they constrict blood vessels, which reduces swelling in the nose and, and can actually do the same thing in the eyes. Uh, the problem is your nose gets used to that medication. And after using it maybe for about three days in a row, it turns out that your nose will, will, will be so used to it that if you stop it, you may get a rebound in symptoms. Uh, the other big thing that we worry about is that this, this effect on the blood vessels uh, can occur throughout your body. Is that kind of a resort when the other medications you talked about uh, don't work? Yeah, absolutely. So we think about shots in a few different settings. One would be uh, someone's tried all of those options. They've tried the oral antihistamines. They've tried the nose spray. And they still continue to have symptoms. Uh, that would be a setting where we'd probably want to see someone like that in our office. Uh, a few things we'd be thinking about would be allergy testing. Um, you know, what are you allergic to? Uh, uh, a lot of times there may be a combination of indoor things and outdoor things that are causing allergies. People have allergies in different seasons where maybe nine months out of a year you're going to be miserable. Uh, that would be another indication for someone to think about shots. Um, there are some downsides with shots. Uh, the main issue is that probably for at least three years uh, to get benefit. Uh, now, the upside of shots is that effect may be permanent, and that's the hope, is that people have long-lasting benefit after completing course of shots. So, you know, kind of in summary, it, it's a good way to potentially reduce the need for medications, uh, treat symptoms when other things aren't working, and maybe a long-term therapy to hopefully take allergies away or at least reduce the symptoms quite a bit, hopefully forever. We welcome your questions for Dr. Faud Ishmael on this edition of Ask Us Anything About Seasonal Allergies from Penn State Health. Some uh, really interesting information so far here. You know, I would like to uh, ask you a bit about children versus adults. It seems like, I mean, I, I know for one, I, I knew very early on in life that I was going to have seasonal allergies, mm -hmm. and they've stuck with me ever since. Is that typical? Yeah, so that's typical. Um, so in children, uh, especially with the outdoor allergens, we tend to see it starting maybe around the ages four, five, six, or so. Uh, in general, we need, you know, children need probably a few years of seeing pollens to start becoming allergic. Uh, the problem with allergies is once you have them, they typically don't go away. So they typically start in childhood and persist throughout adulthood. Uh, and so they are pretty bothersome in that sense. 
So when it comes to allergy season for asthma sufferers, are there some additional issues there that those people need to worry about? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we tend to think about allergies as things involving the upper airway, the nose, the eyes. Uh, asthma is a disease of the lower airways, but actually can be triggered with the same things. So allergies are a major trigger for asthma. So people who, who uh, have asthma and, and allergies, uh, they'll have symptoms like wheezing, coughing, shortness of breath, uh, chest tightness. And uh, essentially the same thing's happening in someone with nasal allergies. You're, you're getting swelling in the airways, you're getting mucus production. Um, it's a little bit more dangerous though. We, we think about allergies really as more being an issue with quality of life, people are miserable. Uh, asthma really can be something uh, a little bit more severe. You worry that people may end up in the emergency room if their asthma is not controlled. So it, it's one of those things that we like to keep a close eye on. If, if we have asthmatic patients who are allergic, uh, we like to count them a little bit that some of these triggers might also worsen the asthma. Uh, some of them may need to be on a daily inhaler, at least during the allergy season. Um, and so if, if someone notices those types of symptoms, it's a good idea to contact your physician. You're watching Ask Us Anything About Seasonal Allergies from Penn State Health. I'm Scott Gilbert alongside Dr. Faud Ishmael. He's given us some great information. We welcome your questions as well. Say you suffer seasonal allergies every spring. What are some of the issues you deal with? Here's a uh, chance for you to get some advice straight from a physician. You know, it seems like it never fails. Anytime the symptoms... that be persistent usually throughout the course of that season. Most viruses tend to last a few days and then they start to get better. Um, but in the end, they can be a little difficult to sort out. So um, luckily, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the allergy medicines really work very well for colds as well. Things like antihistamines can help sneezing regardless of the cause. Uh, if symptoms keep persisting, that's a sign that it's, uh, it's more likely to be allergy driven. Yeah, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about outdoor allergens. That's our focus today. But there's a whole different set of allergens that affect people indoors all year round. Can you talk just briefly about those and, what, and how those compare to outdoor allergies? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, uh, many people have both indoor and outdoor allergies. So uh, people may have symptoms year round and get, then get worsening during the seasons. So the main indoor allergens are dust mites. That's a big one in this area. Uh, dust mites live in uh, fabric, actually, so they're in your bedding, or pillows, uh, they may be in carpets. So people may have symptoms even during the winter if they're allergic to, to dust mite. Uh, animals are another major source of allergens, things like cat and dog. Um, typically furry animals are the ones we think about. Um, you know, in this part of, of Pennsylvania, we don't, we don't think about this a whole lot, but uh, there may be things like cockroaches that may be, uh, may be issues. Those tend to be more in inner city type environments. Uh, rodents may also be sources of, of, uh, of allergens, and you know here we see most often our lab workers where, where we use some of these as models to study disease. Um, so, so quite often people have, uh, may have both. So when it comes to allergy testing, who should consider that? You know, given all these allergens that are out there, I mean, at what point do you suggest that for patients as a way to sort out what are and aren't triggers for that individual? Yeah, so first of all, really anyone just wanted to know what they might be allergic to, even if they have symptoms uh, at just one particular time of year, that might be helpful because we can uh, potentially make better recommendations about how to avoid things. Um, certainly people have tried the medications and it's not helping. Uh, we, we'd want to think about testing. And then someone who has symptoms, you know, as we talked about, multiple seasons of the year, maybe year round, uh, that might be considering stuff like allergy shots. That, that would be a, a key step is determining what they're allergic to. Good advice, Dr. Faud Ishmael. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching. Again, we welcome you our, your uh, questions and your comments even after the fact. If you add your questions to the comment field below this Facebook post, we'll make sure to get those to Dr. Ishmael and get a uh, answer posted for you. And please feel free to share this post if you found this information helpful. And thank you again for watching. Ask us anything about seasonal allergies from Penn State Health.